Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Where is your confidence in? Are you confident in God? Or you're confident in your abilities? Or you're confident in somebody else to reach God for you? The answer to this from your heart will determine where you are in life, where you will be in life, where you're coming from in life. No, not really where you're coming from in life. And it will tell us about your associations in life. Do you know that um, Jesus actually said that we should have confidence in God constantly? That whatever we're doing, it should be predicated on the fact that God is faithful to his word. That he keeps his word. So we trust him because he keeps his word to fulfill that which concerns us from his word then that means that you got to know this word for yourself, what he says concerning you, concerning that particular thing that is happening around you. Many of us have confidence in somebody else's connections to God, somebody else's ability to reach God on our behalf. And it's commonplace in Christendom now. You'd have noticed over the past couple of weeks to months, I have been happen on this i see this dangerous trend in christianity where we tend to want to have a relationship with somebody who has a relationship with god instead of having a relationship with god many of us have gotten to the stage in our lives where we've had relationships deep relation deep and personal relationships with god but because we've come across um, trying times we've come across um persecution so to speak challenges and we look across over the fence and see that it looks like there's somebody across the fence who apparently is in his kairos moment or her kairos moment and is getting uh, speedy answers from god and we now jettison our own relationship with god we, we forget the process we forget that he who was faithful in the past is still faithful and that he will come true for us Rather, we choose now to hitch our wagon with that other fella across the fence. And whether he or she is dealing with his relationship based on scripture fully, whether he is behaving as an adult in Christ as compared to yourself, you choose to <clears throat> take down your... Um, trousers or your pants uh, the americans say pants or your trousers that's as a male and go back to diapers and unfortunately you decide that you're going to emulate and copy this other chap or this other fella or this other lady across the fence because apparently he or she is getting results now results are not the end game. The end game is, are you doing what the Lord has said you should do based on your current revelation? You don't have to regress in your revelation. Revelation is supposed to be progressive. That is a mark of growth. If you've had an experience with the Lord, that he's opened your eyes to certain things, certain things in scripture, and you set aside the childish things you did in the past. You see, Paul said that when I was a man, I behaved like a when I was a child, I behaved like a child. Now I'm a man, I set aside childish things. Now, if you happen to have gotten to the stage of adolescence or adulthood in Christ, and like I said, challenges come, you are not expected to go back and start behaving like a child because you see somebody else that is a child in Christ somebody else as a child in Christ getting fantastic results, even though based on scripture, like I said, the person is erring. Not that he's erring or she is erring because they want to on purpose, but because of a lack of insight and a lack of uh, revelation or understanding, you will be held responsible. Not that person who, out of ignorance, is erring, but the person is getting results. God is such a loving father that for that person, 
because he wants to demonstrate his love. He overlooks the times of ignorance. But you who has matured in Christ, if you choose to go back to the level of ignorance, sorry, my brother, sorry, my sister. It's just like in a natural family. If your child is, say, a 15-year-old boy, and suddenly, because the 15-year-old boy notices that the uh, two-year-old neighbor gets the attention of the father or the mother by peeing in bed, the 15-year-old now says, ah, this is, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to get attention of my own father and starts peeing in bed. How happy will his father be or her, or, or her father be? Won't be pleased at all. Instead of growing, you're regressing. Don't do that. Just bear in mind that God is faithful. There are times that we have trials. There are times that we have challenges in life. And those periods are periods that we are supposed to grow because we've had a relationship with our Father. We've known that He is faithful. He's come true for us in the past. He will come true again for us, even now. Just be patient. Be persevering. Stand your ground. Don't regress. That is the worst thing you can do to yourself. You know that this is childish in Christendom, in Christianity. Because you have, it has been revealed to you from your relationship with the Father. But you choose to set it aside <clears throat> and say, after all, uh, Mr. A or Miss B is getting results doing this. So I will close my eyes to what God has shown me and start doing this. Doesn't make sense. Children, it's only children that behave that way. Your father wants you to grow up, to mature in Christ. Do the right thing. Make your father proud. That even in the times of adversity, you stand. You stand based on what he's shown you, what he's told you. But based on your level of revelation, you are not expected to regress, to try and get from your father. No, don't do that. Show him that he can count on you. That no amount of pressure will cause you to balk, will cause you to behave like a baby. God bless you. Hallelujah.